anyone else uh, checking in tonight? Okay, uh, Neil, uh, KL7HQR, are you uh, ready to transmit a picture? Yeah, I think I am. Let's give it a try and make sure that uh, this is working okay and we don't have a problem with the, with the YouTube, which I see just came alive there. So this would be uh, PG120. PG120. KL7HQR, a good copy here. Um, I'll toss it to Bob for first comment. Okay, Neil has to put this label at the bottom saying, where is this located? Well, I don't have a clue. It's obvious in a uh, well-attended area, and it looks like, to me, it might be a... Uh, merry-go-round or something like that somewhere, maybe at a fair. Uh, I think it's kind of too fancy to be Cal Expo, but it could be. Uh, picture quality is real good. The colors came through, very few pixel pops. Uh, anyway, that's all I can tell. I don't know. My guess was Cal Expo. It probably isn't. Thanks, N6PGQ. Anders, nr 6 Good reception here. Um, let see, do I have all the knobs turned? Yep, yep, all right. So just checking here. Got uh, a lot of audio paths going right now, but um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, uh, yeah, good reception. A uh, few dots here and there, not too much. Um, uh, clearly some kind of fair. I'm, uh, my first reaction was that maybe this is Pier 31 uh, in San Francisco. Could that be it? Mm, that's my guess. And R6H, back to you. Uh, thanks, Anders. Uh, Al KN6PRD and his wife are voting for Pier 39 with a 40% confidence. Um, good evening, Al, and also Craig. Uh, Carol, KP4MD. I'm going to have to agree. Uh, I got a good copy here, just a few bits of 
pixelation in the sky, but I see in the lower right a woman wearing a down jacket and a gentleman just wearing a polo shirt. So that looks like San Francisco weather to me. Uh, Neil, KL7HQR. Well, uh, Anders missed by eight. Uh, he said 31. It's Pierre 39. Uh, boy, th there's no uh, no fooling you guys, huh? including uh, uh, off there. It was pretty good. Uh, this uh, is a picture that I extracted from a video that I took uh, when I took uh, my Brazilian friend down there to Pier 39. I found a couple of interesting things that uh, this carousel this is the second carousel that they have there now. And uh, it was inaugurated in 2008. And is a, fancy is a good word for it, it's a two story carousel. You don't see too many of those. And it was made in Italy, and all the animals were hand, hand uh, carved. Uh, the one, for, unfortunately, because of the extracting from a video, which you cannot see on top, there, uh, on top there are many, many pictures uh, depicting uh, San Francisco uh, famous spo uh, spots. So, good, everybody. Uh, but the, I'm glad that uh, it went out, and apparently with no distortions like I had before. So it looks like that uh, problem is solved. So thank you. Back to me. Uh, thanks, Neil Kale, 7 hqr This is James K and 6 UNJ. Bob, you're next, N6PGQ. Okay, this is PD120. N6PGQ. Excellent copy, uh, Bob. That is a very cool sign. Uh, Anders, your turn to comment first. Thank you. Got a uh, good uh, picture here. And very few pops. Uh, I got a repeater ID uh, just uh, underlining Howard there. But it is authorized dealer of Howard's cam and speed equipment. So apparently cams are not part of the speed equipment. And uh, I see a cartoon there of one of those super impractical cars, not something I want to go to Costco or Home Depot with. But other than that, very cool picture. It looks like it's uh, a, I would guess, uh, uh, maybe a metal sign. Um, well, maybe not, but yeah, um, it looks like it's nailed to a uh, white wall there. So um, yeah, that's uh, what I can see. NR6H, back to net. 
Thanks, uh, Anders. Uh, Carol, KP4MD. Let's see, is this working? Uh, K yeah, this is KP4MD. Uh, my picture you can see on YouTube, uh, if any pixel pops, maybe uh, just a handful, hardly visible. Very good solid copy. I didn't see that uh, uh, line uh, of uh, the uh, repeater ID under Howard's, uh, the word Howard's. What's been happening on this frequency is uh, we have a bit of a uh, uh, a little bit of tropo uh, propagation and uh, there's a repeater down in the South Bay area on the same frequency and it's possible I think you might have picked them up uh, causing that little bit of interference but I didn't see that at all I have a completely clear solid picture of a vintage sign for Howard's cams and speed equipment so back to Annette this is KP4MD uh, thanks, Carol. Uh, this is James K and six Q and J. I don't have the. Uh, I have a clean shot too. I don't have any uh, identifiers or any interference either. Uh, Neil K L seven H Q R. Yeah, K L seven H Q R. Same here. Uh, no uh, interference. One of the best pictures in, as far as a uh, count of uh, of uh, spots that I've ever got. Very very even color and. Uh, well, Anders, I think that was one, it's a representation of a, one of the super Formula One cars, probably in the 50s. And uh, No, uh, going to Costco wouldn't do any good because uh, you couldn't put anything in. Costco only sell things in, in big things, in big sizes. So, Good copy, uh, uh, Bob, and uh, wonder where, uh, where this is located. Back to uh, Annette. Thanks, Neil. Uh, Bob, I assume this is some kind of self-portrait. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, well, my middle name isn't Howard. Anyway, uh, as usual, my wife looks at me and says, you know, today's Wednesday and the Nets are tonight. And I kind of, you know, stare at the ceiling. So we happen to have been at Mel's Diner in, uh, in Roseville, and they have all these signs around. And so I took a picture of this one. Let me drop this. Uh, Howard's was a uh, Southern California company that uh, ground cams and sold speed equipment, uh, passed on to his son, and then it went off to Wisconsin, where uh, they're still manufacturing cams. Uh, you know, obviously they aren't the same exact people that were doing it back many years ago. Um, he uh, had a couple of race cars, and he called them the Howard Cam Rattlers. And uh, so anyway, this is a, a picture a sign, actually, that uh, was recreated uh, by Bose Neon Shop, which is off of Sunrise. And they did almost all of the uh, non-pictures uh, of uh, the people in American Graffiti. They did all the car stuff, uh, did the neon, did the signs and provided it for lots of the male diners. So there it is. Uh, thanks, Bob, uh, and 6PGQ. Uh, any other comments or questions before we move to Anders? Good evening, Alpha India 6 Delta Golf. Sorry I'm late. Alpha India 6 Delta Golf. Hello, Joel. Um, did you copy the last picture that Bob sent up? Just in time, I got things working and started up. So I did receive it, and I agree, it's it's, it's very clean, very few pops, um, and I don't think you really have anything to add uh, otherwise. Um, wait, wait, wait a minute, no, I got a question. Okay, so what kind of car is this? He said formulas or something or another? Oh, I think that was Neil's attempt at humor. Uh, no, it's just a, a hot rod. Uh, something that you'd use probably on the lakes or maybe on a dirt track and uh, drive it, but uh, it's, you know, obviously fictionalized. Roger to that. Okay, something from the, so you take a 30s or 40s or body and, and, and really customize it and, um, uh, yeah, 
Well, not much in the way of safety uh, feature, well, by modern standards anyway here. I mean, it does have a roll bar, and he is wearing a helmet, but, and I suppose that was being extra careful back then, but not nowadays. Yeah, I don't know the exact era, but it'd be post-war. Lots of history in, in uh, you mentioned movies, so yeah, who... Between all the different companies and cars and then movies, and then you got cross about movie cars or car movies. <laughs> lots of, I'm sure there's lots of interesting uh, tidbits that could be uh, mentioned. Uh, Joel, I'm glad that you could join us. Um, you'll go after Carol. Anders is next, then Carol, then you. Um, Anders, NR6H. You ready? I believe I am, and this is going to be a PD-120. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I have to search for my um, uh, start button on the um, uh, audio repeater program to get my voice to it's a stream on YouTube. Sometimes it's not on the foreground, so I have to look for that. Uh, very nice picture here. Um, I don't hardly see any pops either, peak pixels. Maybe, mm, I don't know, m maybe about eight or nine that I could see in a darker area. Uh, the lower half of the picture. Estrella, which is um, uh, a Spanish word for star, dill chips, and it looks like potato chips with dill flavor. Uh, but the, uh, that which would make me think that this came from a, a Spanish country, except that they wouldn't spell it out in English. So that's funny. Uh, and then the other products down there is something called Calis, it's K-A-L-L-E-S maybe. Uh, I'm guessing since this is something that um, that Ann Anders is sharing that it's something from Sweden, um, but uh, and I saw I see the uh, the the chip uh, bag is propped up against the wall with a uh, an AC outlet there on, on the left side, N6NASSTV and 
the date, 2208.31. Uh, there seems to be a uh, kind of a bar effect over the top third where it's really dark for a bit and then there's a light bar below it and another dark bar. I don't know if that's some kind of an artifact, but otherwise a very nice clean picture. Back to net. This is KP for MD. Thanks, uh, Carol, KP4MD. This is James, KN6QNJ. Uh, Joel, uh, AI6DG. So, I would guess we're at a kitchen. We're looking down at a countertop um, with a, a tile backing wall behind it and an American AC outlet. So, this is in the U.S. It's not um, elsewhere. Um, and yeah, I don't know what the products are, but we got a bag like of chips with Estrella. I don't recognize the brand. I don't recognize the product. Dill chips, are they potato chips or pickle chips or, you know, that doesn't make sense. And then a couple of uh, tubes underneath the kind of like uh, toothpaste tubes. But um, uh, since, since one of them, since the callus has a picture of uh, a guy eating like toast, I'm assuming it's some sort of bread spread. Um, and the other one is Mez, Messinor. I have no idea what that would be. Um, and I originally thought that 220831 was a zip code, but nope, that's a date. Um, uh, is that today? Yeah, that's today. And then it looks like we've got the edge of, of something on the extreme right, maybe a, a tablet or a computer or something. Uh, can't quite... It's got, if it's a screen, it's got all blue. Back to net AI60. Oh, and, and I think it's underneath a, um, um, a cabinet. So that's probably up on top. It's like shadow from from the kitchen lights interacting with whatever cabinet we're under. Back to net AI60G. Thanks, AI60G. Uh, Neil, KL7HQR. KL7HQR, again, fantastic copy. Uh, I agree with everybody, you know, everybody's comments, you know, with the Estrella and the dough chips, and uh, I, again, a very, uh, no, no big pops. And the one thing that uh, I noticed, uh, I've been spending some time doing some videos and editing, I noticed that either Anders Weiss is going to be very upset with him because he painted N6 and ASS TV and the date up on a wall. And I noticed also from uh, the NR6H, it has a, a very a nice slant. So he, you're doing a very good job of uh, overlaying those, those those fonts in such a way that they look like they're part of the picture. So I would like to learn how to do that myself. That's an Neil, I was thinking the exact same thing. I think, Anders, you're going to have to do a tutorial one day or one evening. <laughs> Bob N6 PGQ. Well, you guys have covered most of it, and you know how I am at guessing. I usually get it, you know, about 180 degrees wrong. I almost was guessing that those tubes are like some kind of like squeeze cheese or something like that that you would eat. So nice food and uh, good quality. Very few pixel pops. You can notice them in the in the gray at the bottom. Uh, so I don't know. I'm going to be interested to see what this is, and now I'm getting hungry. N6 PGQ. Thanks, Bob. Um, well, it's definitely Anders' lunch in the green bag, and then he's using the squeeze tubes as an antenna sealant. I'm sure of it. Uh, Anders, nr 6 Well, you guys are tricky to fool. This is uh, definitely, um, the tubes are definitely bread spread, both of them. And the chips are chips. These are basically three products that the U.S. as a whole is missing out on. These are three Swedish delicacies, um, I would say. Um, the dill chips is a complete mystery to me why we don't, we have every other kind of potato chips. Why don't we have chips um, that are flavored with dill? Um, I mean, it's almost like pickled, but it's not really pickled. Uh, that's not really it. These are, it's like dill, just fresh dill spread as, as, a, as a spice or, yes, they're, they're, um, they're um, uh, just dipped in, 
the in bill and it's awesome it's fantastic it's the best kind of potato chips ever um i just don't get it why we can't find i i've looked everywhere in the u.s i well i haven't but uh, um they don't certainly don't have it in the stores i i visit so um bill chips is a delicacy um definitely so this is actually a bag the Estrella brand is a swedish brand and it's uh it's um, uh, something I brought back from Sweden last time I was there. Imagine what uh, the weird things I pack in my bag. But it's light, uh, so mostly air, so it's easy to get back. Um, the tubes are even weirder. Short break. So let's start with the callus. Callus is a, uh, um, it's actually creamed roll. It's, uh, it's cod roll. Uh, it sounds Maybe not so fun, but it's a uh, it's a caviar basically. Um, when Sweden joined the, e the EU, uh, they had to rename Kallas. It was used to be called Kallas caviar, but uh, the EU could not agree that this was something that could be called caviar. So they had to remove the word Kala, get the word caviar. So now it's just Kallas. Kalle is a Swedish name for Karl, I guess. So kind of a slang for Karl. So that's Kalle, as you can see on the tube there, and he's eating a crisp bread, a slice of crisp bread with uh, his caviar on it there. And it's really uh, smoked cod roll. That's what it is. It's, uh, there's a little bit of sugar in it. It's, uh, it's absolutely delicious, but every American that I have ever um, had taste this said it was probably one of the worst things they ever seen. So um, you, I guess you have to grow up with it. But... Uh, I always bring back a tube or two uh, when I go to Sweden. And then finally, the Mesmer. It says M-E-S-S-M-E, -S -S -E, which is an O with two dots over it, and R. So uh, that is a kind of a butter. And uh, I guess uh, the straight translation would be whey butter. So whey is the uh, the uh, leftover when you do cheese, right? So when you, when you turn... Um, the, uh, the cheese, uh, you get whey, and that fluid is what they use to make mesmer. So mesmer is, um, it's, it has a, it's actually good for you. It's better than butter. Um, so it's got a kind of a sweet, zesty taste to it. It's got a lot of milk sugars in it, calcium, iron. Uh, it's really good for you. And uh, yeah, great bread spread. So uh, three products that the U.S. is definitely missing out on. And um, the final comment there on the, uh, on the right, that's a Google Home uh, screen that is in our kitchen. That's our kitchen TV. And, uh, yeah, I'll be happy to have a little master class in how to apply perspective to fonts on a picture. Anytime. <laughs> NR6H, back to net. NR6H, thank you. Uh, very interesting. It sort of reminds me of uh, when I lived in England and used to put Marmite on toast, uh, which was, uh, I guess, came from England. I'm sure somebody will know. And I survived on that. <laughs> um, Carol, KP4MD, it's your turn. Okay, first I want to thank Anders very much for... Uh, the uh, description of Swedish delicacies that we are missing out on. Um, I tried caviar once and uh, that was, I guess, uh, when I graduated college, the senior class had kind of a reception and uh, I was never really very much attracted to it. Anyhow, uh, uh, looks like interesting uh, taste. Okay, uh, this is going to be also PD 
Uh, KP4MG, excellent copy. It seems like you took a can of caviar and turned it into some sort of capacitating, capacitating device. But I'll let Joel tell us what that is. Joel, go ahead, AI6DG. Well, it's a filter of some kind. Um, probably decent high frequency, but not super high. I mean, I don't know, 440 or above, maybe to just two gigs. Um, it's interesting looking at, okay, so we've got the two sides left and right in and out. You can see how you've got BNCs inside the little um, can, and you've got the wire going off the center conductor to some of the coils. So I'm assuming that that tap point is to match impedance. Um, so you've got uh, um, three coils between going from the, 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 the case of the can on the bottom up to, and those are adjustable caps up on top. Um, the only thing I'm wondering is I don't see any interconnect between the, the left coil and the right coil. So, um, or is the case the interconnect? Uh, I'm definitely really curious, you know, what band, what kind of filter, what frequency construction method, uh, what's it used on uh, interesting BNC connectors, no, not SMAs or any of the higher frequencies. Uh, type of connectors, not that BNCs are, aren't high frequency, but they're not typically used in microwave or type stuff. Uh, oh, okay, uh, man, I, I probably made a fool of myself and said something stupid already, so I'll stop at that and, and I look forward to the explanation. Back to that AI6DG. Well, Joel, your explanation is a lot better than mine. KN6QNJ moving to Neil, KL7HQR. Okay, uh, first of all, the quality of the picture today, uh, I don't think we've had a, a night that uh, overall that we had a, a picture quality like we've been having tonight. Uh, I was just wondering if this is not, if those squares, uh, the grid square behind, I don't know the scale, but it could be about a meter per square, which makes about three feet per square, so that could be a very, very large can. So that definitely in that case would not be a uh, high frequency, much uh, UHF, it would be probably very low frequency. On the other hand, bringing it back to reality, looks like a, a really interesting uh, device that I am very curious to know about, to tune, tune a circuit or filters. That's an end. Thanks, Neil. Uh, Bob, N6, PGQ. Well, I can't add too much. Obviously, the scale is small since those are BNC connectors on both ends. Uh, it looks to me like the coil on the right is of slightly larger diameter than the others, but it could be the angle of the picture. Uh, good quality. I'm going to uh, be interested to see what Carol explains in a couple of seconds. N6 PGQ. It really is excellent quality. I also notice on the bottom, I see both Carol's call sign and Anders' call sign. Anders NR6H, uh, what is this? Do you know? Um, so actually, Carol uh, was the one uh, that taught me what that means. Is uh, 595 means that she received me perfect last time. Um, and uh, so she was really quick to put the could put my call sign into the picture before she sent it. So uh, that's um, that's kind of what that means. Um, and Carol, I think you can fill me in there on the more precise description of that. But that's how I interpreted it anyway. And as for the scale, uh, I think the BNC plugs kind of uh, gives away the scale here. So this is something in the order of an Altoid can. Um, and uh, I would kind of uh, also see the the, uh, the indent in the lid there at the bottom of the picture that, that would tell you that this is probably an Altoid can. Um, and um, this is a cavity filter. Um, frequency, um, because of the coils, um, maybe it's go coming down in frequency, so uh, 440, or, uh, but I can't imagine that you can squeeze in it going all the way down to 2 meters, so I would say, um, or even, even uh, 220, so I would say that this is a 440 
cavity filter, that's my guess, and R6H back to that. Uh, very good. Um, I always thought cavity filters had to be really big. Uh, but I'm interested to learn. Uh, Carol, KP4MD. Okay, yeah, this is KP4MD. Very, very good. Uh, Anders, you uh, hit the nail right on the head. This is uh, designed for 222 megahertz, and it is in an Altoids can. Uh, it is a uh, bandpass filter, and uh, what you see there are three uh, uh, LC circuits. The uh, the coils connected to the, the the bottom end of the coil, of course, is soldered right to the the, the ground uh, to the uh, can, and the top uh, end is connected to a piston capacitor. Those uh, piston capacitors have uh, the screw. They're adjusted by the screw that uh, goes in and out of a ceramic form. The screw itself is at ground potential. Uh, it's uh, attached to the case there through a nut that has a direct connection to ground and there's a ceramic uh, form around that screw and around that ceramic form you have a metal uh, uh, a metallic uh, type of layer that's a deposit on top of the uh, of the ceramic so there the ceramic is the dielectric of the capacitor and the value of the capacitor varies as you turn the screw in and out uh, so uh, it's a pretty neat little uh, device used for uh, um, UHF type of circuits where you need small amounts of uh, variable capacity. Uh, the um, wire there is uh, just, uh, I believe it's uh, 12 or 14 uh, uh, American wire gauge wire that I pulled out of some Romex that I had, I wound it around uh, a, uh, a screwdriver uh <laughs> as a form. and. Uh, got the things to resonate at 222 megahertz. And uh, uh, Joel was absolutely correct that the, uh, uh, the connections from the BNC connectors are uh, uh, at a uh, low part of uh, those two um, uh, coils on the outside, which is trying to get a, an approximation of the impedance uh, close to 50 ohms, because the top ends of those coils are gonna be a high impedance, of course. The uh, the one thing that's missing in this picture is that I later added uh, some gimmick capacitors, which uh, was very simple to uh, increase the coupling between uh, one each section. Uh, what I did was I soldered uh, uh, some uh, hookup wire uh, to the uh, the center piston capacitor, and I just uh, put the uh, uh, ends of the hookup wires in proximity to the uh, to the other piston capacitors which is uh, what's called the gimmick capacitor It'd give you a coupling of my maybe one or two picofarads if that much and uh, adjusting those uh, the distance of those gimmick capacitors as well as the resonance of uh, each of those circuits uh, will give you a varying amounts of uh, 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 sharpness of the uh, band pass curve and uh, varying amounts of insertion loss as well. So it was an interesting project and it worked very well. So I uh, thought I'd just share it. It's pretty nifty. Uh, so back to net. This is KP for MT. Thanks, Carol. That's very, very impressive. Uh, any questions for Carol before we move to Joel? I don't see how the center coil and cap are, are, are working in the circuit because it seems like it would be doing a cap and coil from ground to ground. Uh, yeah, it works as a filter because it's uh, going to present uh, uh, like a zero, pretty close to zero ohm impedance at the resonant frequency. So you're going to have a flow of the RF current peaking right at the resonant frequency uh, on, uh, on all of these. It's uh, essentially a parallel uh, uh, well, I guess it's a series LC circuit, but they're, a they're actually parallel because the ground end of the coil and the ground end of the capacitor are connected together. So uh, you can imagine those as parallel LC circuits uh, uh, and their capacity coupled uh, uh, through the, uh, the tops uh, over. Thank you, Carol. Any other questions uh, uh, for KP4MD? 
where did you come up with the idea in R6H? Uh, okay, yeah, this is not a com this is not a very original idea. This is a, uh, um, a t this is a type of circuit that a lot of radios use. They call these helical resonators uh, as bandpass circuits in the front end of uh, VHF and UHF receivers. Uh, so um, that's uh, that was the idea. It's not original. Over. Thank you, Carol. Um, Joel, you you're uh, up next to share a photo. AI sixty G. And that was PD-20. Sorry, I didn't say that to begin with. Uh, that's okay. Um, I timed it, and that's exactly how it timed out. Uh, thanks, Joel. Hey, Neil, KL7HQR, you're first to comment. Yeah, it's KL7HQR. Again, a very good picture of a, a big room with an escalator going down. Uh, on the left, I assume the one on the right coming back up. Transparent uh, walls on the escalator. Big uh, blue wall on the left side. And my first guess would be that this would be uh, an airport because it appears to me it has some lines with the uh, with people with luggage in there. Resolution is not the best in my copy. Uh, so we could be. Uh, it looks like there is a display of some kind on the far wall upright, uh, which could be could be anything. Anyway, uh, big, big white room, big blue wall, good copy, escalators, and I would like to know the details. Back to that. Uh, thanks, Neil. Bob, N6PGQ, and this is James, KN6QNJ. Well, Neil got most of it. We're looking down uh, the stairs in the middle of uh, what looks like maybe a set of escalators. Uh, looks like maybe on the back wall in the black rectangle might be uh, an indicator of some kind, you know, arrivals or 
locations of things. Uh, and uh, looks real interesting. I can't tell if the left side at the bottom is carpeted or what we're looking at. The quality is pretty good. More pixel pops than uh, we've had earlier, but still good quality. And 6 PGQ. Thanks, Bob. NR6H, Anders. So, uh, good reception, good colors, um, not very many pixel pops. Um, resolution is, makes the, uh, the image suffer a little bit because it looks like all the people down there, uh, they're almost like uh, Minecraft, like blocky uh, little figures. Um, I happen to know a lot of details about where and what and uh, what the details are here, so I am going to defer to Joel. And R6H, back to net. Okay, thanks, Anders. Uh, Carol, KP4MD. Okay, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just going to say it kind of looks like maybe some kind of a convention center. I have no idea where it is, but I'm guessing it's maybe someplace like Las Vegas because it's a pretty large scale. That's all, KP4MD. Otherwise, good cop. And uh, it almost looks like there's like people are lined up to go into a theater. Definitely looks like a convention center or a theater or something like that. Uh, Joel, can you tell us about it? AI6 DG. So this is the the final escalators going down into the main lobby area of the Caesars Forum convention space in Las Vegas, um, and. Caesars likes to use, name everything after forum, so this is not the forum shop, this is not the, the forum tower, this is not even at Caesars Resort, this is the Caesars Forum convention space that's across the street from the Caesars Resort, behind Link Flamingo Harris. <laughs> Very confusing to some people, I imagine. Um, and this is actually just one of two escalators. So there's a, a walkway. You know, and you, you know, you're basically walking inside inside a corridor um, from the the fully uh, Harris Link Resorts. Um, and then you go down one set of escalators, and then you go down another set of escalators. So the, the, that walkway is pretty high up, I guess, to, to to get over the road and and very various other things that are in between. Um, and this was at DEF CON, the convention a couple of weeks ago I went to, and this was actually the after event party. So this was at like 11 p.m. on Sunday night, when, and the convention had ended at about, I don't know, 4 or 5 or 6 in the, a the afternoon. So the, the, the numbers of people aren't, are nowhere near as, as how many they were, had been earlier in the weekend. Um, this, so, so you got like a yeah. There's a little sign on the left side, kind of middle, that actually has the DEFCON 30 logo on it. Not that you can tell unless you know what you're looking at. And there's a bar in front of that. So they were uh, def, uh, uh, any any of um, hotel that has that hosts DEFCON just loves that we buy so much liquor. So they, there are, there's always bars around selling selling this liquor. Um, and you've got people standing around. You got some tables down there that people are standing around. Um, one interesting thing is that that wall on the left. It's not a wall. That's a video screen playing video. So that entire wall on the left, that's all the blue and and so forth, is one huge monster video screen. There is actually it's actually formed around a door. So that square thing kind of in the middle of it um, is a doorway, and the, the video that's playing was, was constructed to kind of take that into account. Um, apparently, you, know, you got all kinds of hoops and whistles you got to go through to, to present material for that, but uh, DEF CON, um, it's a, very much a, not only a techie crowd, but also an artistic arty, arty crowd, and there's an artist called Ziebler that did the video presentation. It's an 18-minute video loop, kind of a history of DEF CON and history that was actually fascinating to watch. And it takes into account the takes into account the shape of the wall and the doorways, and, and it was really cool, really high resolution. I think that was one of the biggest hurdles to go over is the high, the, to, to meet the 
high resolution requirement that Caesars had to, to put something on that wall. Um, uh, really nice space. This 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 uh, Caesars Forum convention space is really nice. It's it's also really big. <laughs> Lots of walking. You could you exhaust yourself just walking around within one building. <laughs> what what room? Maybe long hallways. Anyway, rambling. Time to pass the net. AI sixty G. Thank you, Joel. Uh, any questions or comments before I uh, throw up a picture? Uh, KL7 HQR, a couple questions. Uh, you keep on talking about uh, DEF CON, DEF CON. Being military, DEF CON is defense condition uh, in my time. So uh, can you clarify that? And also, what's that uh, uh, black display on the back wall on top right that uh, both, both Bob and myself got kind of, uh, confused about it? Um, DEF CON is the name of the convention. It's kind of a computer hacker security convention. Um, if you want to know more, go to DEFCON.org. It's, uh, this was DEF CON 30, so it's been going for 30 years, and it's always been in Vegas. Um, and I'm not sure what, what you're look. what was the question about a display or something? I mean, what, what, you describe where it is. On the white wall in the very back, top of right, that looks like something that Bob indicated could be some arrival. It's a black screen with some uh, white dots. And when you say DEF CON, it's like uh, Delta Echo Foxtrot CON. Correct. Echo Echo Foxtrot Columbia Oscar um, uh, November. Um, uh, okay, so you're talking about a long rectangular sign that's right above the the red emergency lights on the the entrance exit doors in the background, below between the doors and the windows above them. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, it's the very top between the ceiling and whatever is below is the black with some horizontal lines and uh, white dots. Um. Okay, I think you're talking. I think that's a window. I think that's a, a window, and the white dots are, are standard are lights that are hanging in the space above, in that space. Uh, so they're not, uh, uh, yeah, so they're, they're, in the, the, they're hanging in the space between you and those windows that are in the background. So you've got, um, so if you follow the, the stairs straight down and go all the way across the floor, at the far back, you have a whole bunch of doors that, that go out to kind of a, um, an outdoor courtyard area, and above those doors, then you have a kind of a, a white um, um, well, wall or, or space with red red dots and a rectangular sign of some kind. I don't know what the sign says. And above that, you have windows, but the windows are in a grid pattern, with the the, the white dots being, I believe, chandeliers in the, the space. Could they be reflections? Let me look at the original. I do see that the resolution is a bit low. Yeah, I think those are chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. That clarifies it. Back to me. Okay, thanks, Joel. Uh, AR6DG, that's pretty interesting. This is KN6QNJ. Uh, it's, it's, uh, my, my reaction to DEF CON was the same as, as Neil's, so um, I didn't know that that's what that convention was uh, called. Uh, I'm going to test for tone, and uh, maybe, uh, Neil, will you let me know if it goes through? Stand by. Very good tone, no problem at all. Go ahead. Okay, this is PD-120.
uh, Bob, N6PGQ, your turn to go first. Okay, well, I will assume that this is uh, not in Europe. And so what we see in the foreground is a uh, ham radio with a, uh, looks like a L-I-F-E-P-O battery, probably bio uh to its left. And it looks like a 2-meter uh, 440 mag mount antenna, perhaps on a table that's magnetic, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's plastic to me. And uh, it's at the Walnut Grove Community Safety Center. So I don't know whether this was a uh, uh, event that was uh, for emergency or just a uh, outing for the weekend in 6PGQ. Thanks, Bob. Uh, and let's say hi to N6GML, who's uh, watching on YouTube, who's joined us. Uh, Anders, NR6H, comments about the photo? So I definitely agree with Bob there. There is a bio -NO battery. Um, I would guess like a, a eight amp hour-ish size, something like that. Uh, we see an FT991, uh, probably A, in the four bottom uh, right corner. Uh, it's set for 147195, so on uh, the IC, uh, N6 ICW um, system. Um, and uh, we see a, uh, a mag mount antenna that probably is missing its ground plane a little bit there, but uh, the 147195 should be... Uh, doable from Walnut Grove, I think, so that uh, probably worked pretty good as it were. Um, so somebody's out in the field doing some kind of fun, and um, I'd love to hear what this was all about. And R 6 h back to you. Thanks. Uh, Carol, KP4MG. Okay, yeah, this is KP4MG. Uh, yeah, I see the same picture. Nice, clear picture, uh, almost uh, perfect. Uh, almost perfect with uh, and out, out any drop pixels. About maybe I uh, maybe half a dozen, and I can see more over the uh, the uh, side of the building there on the left. Walnut Grove, uh, Walnut Grove Community Center, and uh, uh, some kind of a modern uh, radio there on the f in the foreground with what looks like. Uh, a large uh, uh, LED or LCD screen. Um, you've got uh, yeah the lipo um, uh, battery there, and uh, I don't know. Being in Walnut Grove, that's uh, where they have the really tall TV towers. Perhaps uh, that uh, very thin tower you can see way in the distance in the back may be one of the uh, the tall TV towers at 1,500 feet or something. I can't say, but otherwise it's a nice picture. Back to Nets, KP for MD. Uh, thanks, Carol. Joel, AI6DG. Well, most things have already been said. Um, I'm curious again what model it is and how can you read that display? I, I just have too, too much uh, hay, ha hash to, to, be, to see what model or frequency is on that. Um, I noted there's an Anderson power plug between the battery and the radio. No one's mentioned that. Um, and there's some paperwork on the lower left corner. I don't know if someone's logging contacts or um, are they give, maybe they're giving ham tests and that's the paperwork for the VE to paperwork. Um, looks, it looks like it's, uh, I hope it was a nice day and uh, definitely they have some nice shade there. Uh, I don't think you'd want to be out there doing this um, in the coming weekend. Um, it looks like, a, well it's not a Backyard, it's a front yard, but uh, it looks like a doesn't look like a community center, a safety center. It looks like someone's house, but uh, can't really. Just looking down one side of a wall, so you can't really tell. But uh, hope someone's having fun. Back to Nettie yeah, at 6 dg Thanks, uh, Neil KL7HQR. KL7HQR. Not much else to add, to add except that I am at uh, uh, as you was mentioned. Uh, all oh, Anders, you must have some fantastic eyes to be able to read the frequency and things like that. I cannot, although the picture is really, really good. The one thing that nobody mentioned is that the whole equipment is uh, liquid-cooled. 
uh, I see a uh, faucet with a proper hose there for the cooling of the, of the equipment there on the left side. Back to that. Oh, I'm glad you caught that, Neil. Yeah, it's liquid cooled. It's a, it's a Yaesu 991 and a 15 amp bio NO battery and a mag mount on a plastic table, but it still did reach the N6ICW repeater. Um, this was last Thursday. There was a uh, countywide drill simulating a flood event in the Delta, and the Sacramento County Aries. Uh, team was dispatched as part of the drill. The participants of the drill did not know that a communications failure would be injected into their scenario. So we were uh, set up outside for when they lost uh, communication to call for supplies. So one of the things that we did was call the EOC and request sandbags, for example. So this was just a, a Sacramento County drill. In fact, some of you or all of you probably got an, uh, an alert on your phone uh, that this was going on. Uh, so I'm uh, part of the Sac County areas, and we were deployed. So it's a good training experience, uh, KN6 QNJ. Any other questions? Uh, KL7HQR, well, congratulations. Uh, yes, I remember receiving the, the alert on the phone, and uh, glad to know that uh, we are in in practice, doing what we should be doing. Congratulations, sir. Uh, thank you. Well, it was uh, the first, I think, big drill they've done since COVID. And I can tell you, I don't know if it was the fire chief or whoever was in charge there at Elk Grove had no idea what to do when he was told all communications was down. And, uh, of course, we were just outside, and he was coached to finding us, and then he was fascinated. He had no idea Aries existed and its capabilities. It was a good experience. Good job. Uh, any other comments or questions before I close the net? Uh, Anders, you are on the hook to teach us how to do graphics on our photo. All right, we have to figure out how to do that over slow scan. That's going to take a while, but um, maybe maybe we can find a different forum for that. But uh, love to do it. And our six H back to you. Yeah, sure. uh, Neil, did you say something? I stepped on you. Yes, I did. Uh, Anders, also last time, uh, last week, you presented a picture related to modifications to an antenna. I was really interested in that. I wonder if you can uh, give me a call or send me a, uh, my email is neil, N-E-I-L dot Jimenez, G-I-M-E-N-E-S, I'm all at gmail.com, I'm okay on QRZ. If you can uh, give me a call or uh, I would definitely would like to follow up on that as well as on this uh, uh, video thing. Roger, Roger. I uh, actually thought I did, but um, I will double check and uh, make sure that that information is distributed. Thank you so much. Thanks for doing that, James, and uh, 7312, NR6H. Thanks, Anders. Uh, I think with that, I'm going to close the net. Thanks to all of you who participated. This was a fun net tonight in tonight's SSTV net. We hope to see you again next Wednesday at 9 p.m. The net is officially closed at 10.10 p.m. This is James, Kilo November 6, Quebec November Juliet, wishing all of you a very good evening, and thanks to all who watched us uh, live on YouTube. Have a good evening. Yeah, okay, this is uh, KP4MD. I did want to comment uh, a question that I did not answer was how do you get the call sign into the template. One of the templates uh, on um, MMSS TV, one of the default templates, will capture the Q, uh, the call sign of a the, the last uh, picture that you uh, received. And that only works if the uh, station is transmitting the FSK ID of their call sign. And the way they set that is uh, on the setup uh, the option and setup for MMSS TV. You click on the TX tab and make sure that you tick the box that says ENCODE FSK ID and also make sure that your call sign is uh, typed into the template call sign box. And uh, that uh, sends out uh, 
at the beginning of your transmission uh, your call sign in uh, FSK and uh, the other MMSS TV decodes that and automatically populates the uh, the call sign of the s picture that you are receiving so that's uh, that's uh, an interesting thing if you're not doing that you might try that it's KP for MD is now clear Thanks, Carol. I just checked. I do have that box checked, but I don't know how to put the words on the pictures. So that's probably, uh, I'm, I'm starting from zero. So when Anders or maybe you and Anders do the tutorial, uh, keep that in mind. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you have to select uh, one of the default templates, and uh, it's... Uh, uh, one of the templates that uh, has that um, um, uh, wording in there, and it's got the uh, that. That's another thing, uh, uh, customizing your templates the way you want. So uh, we'll maybe address that in a future uh, net. This is KP for MD Clear. QRZ. So uh, not sure what's going on there. I can send it again. NR6H. Uh, thanks, Anders. Uh, that was to Neil, right? Uh, Neil, did you copy? I know there was, there was some doubling as well. Uh, was somebody else uh, speaking when Anders was speaking? I remember the email, Anders, uh, so um, uh, I'm sure he'll find it. Or if not, you could resend it, I guess. I'll give him a call. He'll figure it out. Um, I did uh, I did see a reply, so thanks for that. And, um, yeah, well, have a good one. Uh, good net for night tonight. And uh, fun, all, as always, good to hear you. Um, and hope to see you soon. And R6H, care. Thanks, Anders. You too. Uh, KN6QNJ, clear.